we on? Okay. Welcome to Handy Quilters Summer Show. We're so excited that you're joining us. I'm Kelly Ashton and I get to be with Christina Whitney yep. again today. And today we're going to show you a little bit about the Amara and the Pro Stitcher. But to start off the show, we want to show you some of the quilts that have been entered into our Handy Quilters Summer Show. So while they're flipping those up there, I'll tell you that to enter a quilt, you tell. How do you enter the quilt into the show? So on social media, it can be Facebook or Instagram. Just make sure you use the hashtag HQ Summer Show. And we want to see everybody's quilt on there. And if you want to look at the quilt, just make sure that you search for that hashtag as well. And that will show all of the quilts that have been submitted. Yeah. So that's how you can see that show. Again, it's hashtag HQ Summer Show. And let's see some of those quilts that we've had on there. So this quilt was sent in by Wisp Farm. It's beautiful. Look at the piecing and the quilting on that quilt is just beautiful. I love it. Fun colors. Yes. What okay. is our next one? And this, oh. I wore my glasses today so I could read. So this, <laughs> this was sent in by Melinda Mel, Darks. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but it's Melinda RX. So Melinda Darks. And what a beautiful setting she's on that quilt in. It could be on a magazine, yep, right? That's, that's a beautiful. beautiful photograph. How fun. Yep. So we have a lot of really fun quilts that have been submitted. So I hope that you will still take some time and submit one for us. So we have some prizes that we're going to be giving away yes. on Friday. Yeah. So Friday, we're going to have our viewer's yeah. choice awards. Okay. And we're also going to have our grand prize. And the grand prize is our fabulous HQ stitch. I hope I don't drop this. <laughs> so, so brand the, new sewing machine. Yes, and the fun thing about the Stitch 210 is it weighs only 12 pounds. Yep. So it's a perfect machine that you can take with you to those. We know quilters like to gather, right? We like to get together with people and, and it's nice to have a machine that you can actually lift from your car and take into the retreat. Yeah, super easy. And so, you can even fit it in a suitcase too. Yes, and it's can. got the hard case. So yeah, yeah I love traveling I've with it. I bought a perfect little suitcase that mine goes with me. So, yeah. okay. So we have a couple other things that are happening this week because of the summer show. So we have first off some amazing prices on the machines. So we have show price happening just this week only. Mm -hmm. And you just need to go in and talk to your local retailer or you can find those prices online at handyquilter.com. And remember that the prices will be increasing on August 1st. So take advantage of these sell prices yes. throughout the end of this week. I think it ends Saturday at midnight, I believe. So that's right. Yep, take, take advantage of that. And tell us about the, the classes that we're offering. Okay, so we have a new site called handyquilter.education where we have some curriculum based courses. Right now we have cl classes that um, are being taught by Jane Hopperich and Susan Manry. And if you purchase either of those classes, you get two bonus Yay. classes with me or with um, Kim Sandberg from our academy. It's a little so, sneak peek of what happened at the academy this year. Yep. So, yeah. So those are great ways to get some further education. So, and again, that's at handyquilter.education. And and those classes will remain on that site. They're not. They're just this week. We just kind of. Um, yeah. They it, started them this week. Yeah, That's, and it's not like a live class. It's a class that you can watch whenever you have the time. Yes, right. So they will remain there. So mm -hmm. even in a month from now or a year from now, you could still sign up and watch those classes. Correct. Okay. And I'm sure they'll add more as time goes on. Yes, that's our new um, education site that we'll continue to add some more advanced classes to. So we're excited about that. Okay. So we have other stuff to give people. So today, yes. if you comment and your name gets chosen, you will receive our beautiful handy quilter apron. It is the quilt while you're ahead. And it's full of three pockets with lots of goodies mm. in them. Thread, some rulers. So lots of fun stuff. So make sure that you comment. Tell us, a, you, a lot of people like to post where they're from. We were gonna ask people to tell us what their favorite stitches per inch is what they like to quilt out. Yeah. Or I we were thinking, tell us how many stitches you have on oh. your machine. Yes. It's kind of like your odometer. So <laughs> I know when I when I sold my Avante, I had like 35 million stitches. I thought that was a ton, but I've heard all kinds of people that have like 95 million, 100 million stitches. So these machines are workhorses. Yeah. So 
So, so yeah, make sure you comment and let us know how many stitches. Let us know. Four stitches per inch or where you're from, anything, and you'll be entered to win that apron with all of those fun goodies in it. Yeah, thanks, Lana. She tells us she likes to quilt at 10 stitches per inch, and actually, ten, I do too, 10 to 12, just depending on um, the type of design mm -hmm. that I'm putting on my quilt, but I'll- And the type of thread. Yes, right, exactly. If I really wanna showcase the thread a little more, I might, I might choose a bigger stitch or something, like that shiny, pretty metallic, put a bigger stitch, so awesome. Excellent. Okay. Tell Let us me, about the machine. I want to just tell you some things about the Amara. I have the Amara in my studio and I, I love it for many reasons, but I want to show you some of the new, the new generation machine has some fun new features. And so we'll zoom in on a few of those. Um, one of them is the independently adjustable handlebars. I can just turn this little knob and turn my handlebars to the inside. And did you notice I'm just turning the left handlebar and now I can turn it down. There's two points of, of adjustment. So I can turn it down or in, okay? And I wanna point out just quickly, I gotta turn them back. Sometimes my muscles are stronger than I anticipate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but why would you, why, was, why is it important to be able to kind of adjust your handlebars, Christina? What? Um, a couple things that pop into my head. First of all, if you're doing any micro quilting. Micro quilting, so design choice. Yeah, you're gonna want to be close down to what you're actually stitching on. Yes. And so having those handlebars down close, you have a lot more control. Right, that's one really good reason that it's helpful to have those. Another one for me is if I spend an entire day quilting, and, and I like to do a lot of free motion, so I do a lot of driving of the machine. Um, holding my hands like this for long periods of time, I think I'm fine, but if you just adjust them a little bit, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised at the ease, like, the relief that you feel in your arms just by changing the position a little bit. And maybe even somebody needs a different position for a physical reason or something, but there's some really good, good benefits of being able to adjust those handlebars. Okay. Um, another great benefit for us is when you can put one down and the camera can see there and the, oh. the handlebar's not in the way anymore. So we've had to play with that a little yeah, bit. Some people but like yeah. to just drive one handed, but yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of a two handed, but. Yep. Um, some more features about the machine really quickly. Um, on the handlebars, on where we have our functions, where we start and stop the machine or the needle up down, we have a third button there. And that third handle, that third button on the handlebar is programmable. So I'll have them zoom in on um, that those handlebars. While they're zooming in, we've got a question about does it help with ruler work? So being able to adjust the handlebars to a position that's comfortable for you definitely can help out with um, with your ruler yeah, work and just being in a comfortable position. Yeah, it does for sure. Okay, there you got a good shot of the, see that third button right there? It's a star on the left handlebar and it's a diamond on the right handlebar and those buttons can be programmed. So let's just say I'm left-handed. It might be easier to have my start and stop on the left handlebar. So I could program the star to be start and stop or one of another new feature on our new generation machines. Okay, I'm gonna change places for you just a little bit. We have a little tie off. Can you see the screen? We have a little tie off. So whenever we start and stop quilting, we pull up the bobbin thread and then we do a little knot. And that right there, we can change the number of it. I'll just do it really quickly. Okay, and if I push this button on the screen, and gently move the machine, it'll quickly take five little micro stitches or whatever number of stitches I have chosen. So those are a couple of my favorite features. I love the tie off too, Carmen. It's like a magic button, isn't it? But I really like to program it on my star button so that I can push that tie off and not move my hands off the handlebars. So, so that's why I love the third button because that is a nice feature for me. But there's more than one option because we're all different and different buttons might work well. And actually they work really well in Pro Stitcher too. So you could show us how they work when you're oh, working yeah. with Pro Stitcher here in just a second. We can okay. do that. Um, a couple other features. We can't probably get the camera down there right now, but there is lighting in the bobbin case area. How many of you <laughs> get down there with a flashlight? You don't need it anymore. The Amara has a lot of wonderful lighting right down in that bobbin case area. Do you it's love got it? Lighting everywhere. We yeah, it's got have lighting the lights everywhere. turned off for filming purposes, but yeah, there are lights yeah. all over. It's okay. fabulous. So there are a couple of, of my favorite features. Um, just so you know, tomorrow, Kim and Christina are going to join us and talk about the Forte, and they're going to talk a little more about the features 
with the Amara and the Forte. So I'm yeah. not going to tell you a ton of the features today. Um, the Amara comes on a Studio 2 frame. It's, it's our unique four pole system. Works really well. You don't have to do much adjusting, you know, in the poles. The, the quilt as it's quilted is just rolled up onto this, this pole in the back called the take up pole. So the four pole system works really well to just load your quilt here, and roll it back and take it up on that pole. So, but yeah. It looks like we've got a question from, is it Margie? She wants to know if we bring up the bobbin thread before we do the tie off. Yes, really good yep. question, Margie. Yep. Bring up that bobbin thread and make yeah. sure you hold on to both the bobbin and the top thread and then you can do your tie off. You know, maybe I should demonstrate that really quickly. Should we do Excellent. that? Excellent. Okay. okay. All right. We'll get the camera set up there. Okay. So I'm going to just do, I'm going to hold on to my upper thread, put needle down, needle up. And if I move the machine to the side, I can pull up that bobbin thread. And it really helps if you cut it from where you last had it. There you go. So I'm going to pull up the bobbin just thread. Move your hand a little bit so they can see that you've got the okay. threads up. Can you see them right there, those two threads? But I do have to hold on to those threads as I push the tie off button. So I'm, I've got both the top and the bobbin thread. Just going to gently move the machine and it's ready to stitch. So I want to show you how easy it is to drive. Okay. Okay. You've got the gears turned off on the Pro Stitcher, so yes, you're ready to go. I do. Cruise is set at 425. That's way too high for me on this frame mounted machine. I like it more at about 200. So I have it in regulated 11 stitches per inch and I have it on cruise. Can you drive it right handed? Can I drive it right handed? Yep. I put the left hand out of the way. Oh, not there very we well. So here's the thing. When I drive it, I like to try to rest my hand on here to help control it. I know you can't hand. see very well, but you're just going to have to pretend like I can stitch with one hand, I guess. This is today's challenge, one-handed stitching. Um, some people are good at that, so me not so much. <laughs> okay. okay. Before you turn it over to me, how do you tie off at the end and that's cut a, your thread? That's a great question. So let me go over that with you. So now that I'm done... I'm going to push that tie off button again, that magic button, push it, gently move the machine. Now I've locked my stitches to finish. So it doesn't, you have to kind of loosen the thread or else I'm gonna pull on those stitches and I'm gonna move it away one time. And then with my other hand, I'm gonna grab that upper thread, bring it back to the same stitch, go needle down, needle up. Now a second time I'm moving the machine away and I could certainly cut my threads right there, but if I do, I leave a really short bobbin tail. So I try to move the machine away at least four to six inches this second time before I cut my threads. And then when I cut it, I should cut one upper thread and then a loop of bobbin thread. And because we did that, I wanna show you one more fun feature while you're right there, Kayla. On the left side of the Amara, we have a tool minder collar. It's a little magnetic strip and it's only on the left side of the machine. And it's a great place to be able to put my scissors or my, screwdriver or my 2.5 millimeter hex wrench that I change the needle and stuff with. So, okay, that's, I love driving the Yamara, the servo motor, the balance, the track, everything. It's just a really smooth machine to drive, but tell us about what other fun you can do. Okay. So in addition to the long arm machine, you can have the pro stitcher, which is our computerized robotic system that you can actually tell the machine what you want to have stitched and where you want to stitch it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is turn my gears back on so that the machine actually has control rather than me just moving it myself. So I'm going to go to my pro stitcher screen and I'm going to click on this gears button. And you can hear those gears drop down and it is ready to go. So you can like drive the machine with the motors engaged, but yeah. if you found yourself getting square circles, it's probably because your motors are engaged. So, yeah. and, and it makes it a little bit stiffer. So it's, it's not quite as smooth, yeah. but you can also hear those gears. Sometimes yeah. they're a little squeaky, that's normal. Um, and it's just that easy to go back and forth from pro mm -hmm. stitcher to free motion. Yep, just push of a button. If you've got this particular carriage. Okay. Some of the older ones, you'd have to put a lever down, but for these newer ones, just to it's push just the button. Easy. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I've got a quilt block here and I want to put a design into 
this triangle. And I'm just going to show you how quick and easy it is to do that. So this blue triangle is the area that I want to fill. So I need to create an area. So the first thing I'm going to do is move my machine over to one corner. And on my Pro Stitcher screen, I'm going to click on my Areas button. And then I've got this multi-point button. And on here, it's also got a diamond, meaning I can use my handlebar, that extra button that Kelly was there talking about that earlier. Third button. There's yeah. that third button. So I can either push the button on the screen or the button on the handlebar. Did you hear that little ding? Yes. That tells me that it actually was recognized. It registered where you actually pushed yep. it. Good. And I've got a pink dot on my screen. I'm going to do another one. And then I'm going to do the third corner of this triangle. Can, gonna... can you point out how they know how many points they just did? Like, yes, I don't know, I don't know see, that they'll be able to see it on the screen. you just tell them. Yep, over here on the side, it has our point count, and I've got three points. So that um, is how many times I've dropped that button or dropped a little point on the screen. And if you look at the screen now, these orange crosshairs, that center is my needle. So as I move my machine around, that needle is moving. And then the pink box represents my blue triangle that I've got on my quilt It top. represents your quilt area. Correct. Okay. Yep. So now I want to fill in that area with the design. So I'm going to go to my File tab, Design, and Open. And we have lists of several designers with all of their designs that come with the Pro Stitcher. So like thousands of dollars worth of designs that come standard on your yes. Pro Stitcher. So I'm going to go ahead. And just so you know, with this most recent update, a lot of new designs were added. Correct. So if you haven't updated to 535. Yep. Um, Penny's oh. asking, when will the beta version be finalized? It was actually finalized in June. So yep. 535 is our current version. So if you haven't tried it, we think you're going to love it. And she's going to show you that what the triangle feature does for you. So yes. So here's a little sneak peek for those of you that have not yet updated to 535, which, by the way, you can do at ProStitcher.com. And you just download directly from there. There's no charge for it. And take it onto a USB, plug it into your machine, and do an update. It's pretty simple. So OK, back to our screen up here. I have got my triangles folder selected under Pro Stitcher Designs. And I think I want to do this continuous curve triangle. So that's the one I want to put in there. Looking at the screen, that design does not fit in my triangle. Well, it's not quite the same shape of triangle, but it's let's not. see what you can do here. So this is one of my favorite tools. It's okay. under the modify, because we want to modify that design, change, change it, it fit. Yep. It's called skew. It doesn't always work perfectly, but this is my go-to to make a design fit into my area. Okay. Um, and in 535, this newer version, we have this button here called Triangle it's Skew. It's a new one, Triangle Skew. Yes. yes. So watch what happens when I hit Triangle Skew. Voila. And Voila. I'm just going to refresh so you can see a little bit better. It's beautiful. And it fit right in there. So at this point, I can baseline it. I can save it. I can stitch it out. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch. So okay. you got to do some fun little swirls. Yes. I'm gonna, I'm going to do a fabulous triangle design here. Okay. So one thing to remember while you're getting it ready is that if triangle skew is grayed out, if it's grayed out, you probably have more than three points. Some people have a tendency to, when they do a triangle, to do one, two, three, and then go four and close off. They think they have to do four to close it off. So if you're doing a triangle, you have to make sure that you only have three points. Correct. Okay. So I like to just move my machine to the general vicinity of my start point. I'm not going to be perfectly right on, but then I'm going to go to my Pro Stitcher tab. And this is where the Pro Stitcher is going to run for me. So I'm under Quilt, and I've got a button called Run. And when I push that button, I've got it set so that I've got my tie-offs turned on, my pull-up is turned on. I'm going to turn my pull-up auto off because I don't want that one on. These are all personal preferences. So now I'm going to hit the proceed button. Notice the machine moved to the start point. It took one stitch for me. 
I'm going to pull up my bobbin. And now when I hit resume, it's going to do the tie offs for me. And then it's going to stitch it out for me. Well, you're a good no hand stitcher. Look at you. <laughs> I can't even no quilt hand. with one hand and you can quilt with zero. So. Okay. It's just kind of mesmerizing. And if you're doing a big project, you can be sitting down at your sewing machine, piecing stuff, let the computer do the work for you. Yes. I noticed, I think it was Rachel said, Pro Stitcher is a game changer. And I'm completely in agreement with you. Pro Stitcher just really changes the abilities that you have on your, pro, on your machine, so. It is fabulous. Can I show you one other real quick trick yes, while I'm here? you bet. Okay, so if you notice in my block, I have several triangles. I did not do the baseline before I started stitching. So if I clear my area, it's gonna take my design back to the original shape that it was in. Uh -huh. But as I create a new area, let's do this triangle down here. And I'm just gonna do a real quick, not super accurate one. I created that new area. It went ahead and skewed it. It already into skewed it. in there. Yep. Okay. So if you're so doing a lot there's of more than one way. If you had baselined it, you still could do it. You would just have to rotate it or something, but because you didn't, it just fit perfectly. The skew is still active. I if love I it. baselined it, it would have baselined and saved that skewed design. And then I'd have a skewed design to skew into the next one and it gets distorted after a while. Okay. So if you just skip that baseline and just keep that skew active, it will continue to baseline into whatever triangle. Great tip. I Sometimes like you'll, you will have to rotate some of the yeah. designs to get them in the right orientation, but that skew will always yeah. be active. So, so that's pro stitcher in a nutshell. So I have to say, I, I was a little nervous um, getting a, a computer to add onto my machine. And my husband kept saying, Kelly, get the computer. And I'm like, ah, I don't know about computers, right? You know, and, but I have found so many places that it's just nice to be able to add precision and perfection, which I don't, I don't have in my free motion, which, but it's okay. I have a different style, but, but I can add my style to that, that perfect block or that perfect design, or it's just, and I'm, um, just here to say if Kelly can learn how to run a computer program, <laughs> pretty much all of you can. So I love it. I love the Pro Stitcher. So thanks. Yeah, it's, it's got lots of other fun features. Yeah. We could talk about it forever. Um, one advice though is if you do get the Pro Stitcher, make sure that you take the time to practice and play with it and get familiar with it before you um, like maybe dive into a show quilt. So mm -hmm. you, you want to get familiar with all those buttons. Um, you can also, if you don't have ProStitcher, or even if you do have ProStitcher, you can download the software onto a window-based computer in simulation. And that is a great place that you can play with it and get comfortable with it and decide if that's something that you like. And again, you can find that at ProStitcher.com as well. So even if I haven't purchased it yet, I can get on there, right? Correct. Yep. You okay. won't get all of those designs, but you'll actually get the software and you'd have to use some of your own designs. Or if you... Um, yeah, if you've purchased some designs, you can do that. There are a few free designs that you can get. Um, so you definitely could play with that and practice with it. But getting familiar with those buttons and yeah. and playing with it, it's, it's a great learning tool. Well, Kathy asked, how long does it take to actually get comfortable with the Pro Stitcher? And, and that answer, Kathy, is probably different for everyone. Definitely. It's how much time you invest in in working with the program. If you only use it once a year, it's going to be tricky to learn. But if you're if you can spend time daily, uh, truthfully, how I learned it was by printing off the tutorials and I would walk through you like the the trick is you have to do something how many times repetitively before it sinks in your brain? Several. Several. For me, it's a several more. But once I follow those tutorials a few times, I'm like, oh, I can do a block by myself. And oh, I can do the edge to edge by myself. So it's just consistency. It's being able to use something repetitively and, and over again. Yeah. And we have a lot of great tutorials on ProStitcher.com that you can watch or underneath it you can actually print the PDF, the instructions, mm -hmm. and and that's what I did was printed the instructions and, yeah. and followed those. So there's a lot of great um, 
uh, what am I trying to say, places. Lots of information out there. Yes, a lot yeah. of great places to, to learn. And and I think ProStitcher is a kind of a continual learning. It's There's always like we do things differently and we learn from each other because, oh, I didn't know you could do it that way or you do it that way and I do it this way and it works both ways. So, yep. but I, I don't think I gave you a very good answer, Kathy, but it's different for everyone, so yeah. Oh, Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. She Hello, posted. Stephanie in New Mexico. So retreats and academy help with learning the pro stitcher. Definitely. So there are lots of classes that are available. Um, your local retailers, a yeah. lot of them have events where our field educators come in and teach classes. Um, we also offer classes here at Handy Quilter. And a lot of those fill up pretty quickly. So get on the Handy Quilter website. It's under education and you can see the different retreats that we offer here and then academy is once a year and it's fabulous yeah like, i i can't even say enough about we it. have we a lot of fun it. so yeah lots of work but a lot of a lot fun, of fun. So. yeah yep did you use pro stitcher for the triangle quilt on the wall so this yep. Yep. quilt that's hanging behind us is actually called the amara quilt it was created by marie eldridge and she does a lot of amazing, amazing stuff. So this is mostly all pro stitcher, I believe. Yes, so, I think she yeah. actually digitized those. She yeah. may have um, like recorded her free motion actually, and then digi you know, put it in and did you, you can do that in, in pro stitcher. You can record. Should we show them? You show them. Okay. Yes. How to record? Well, if you're going to make them stitch one-handed, I'm not going to record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just show. This is just like a little fun tool here. Yeah. So, um, Kelly, you might have to stand back a little oh, bit. I, yeah, you don't want my nose in the picture, right? So I'm going to clear all of this stuff off. And I'm actually going to turn my gears off for this particular thing so that I can move the machine smoothly. Okay. And then under our Pro Stitcher tab, we have this option to record. And over here on the side, I've got a record button. As soon as I touch that button, the machine is going to record any movement that I make with this machine. Okay. So what Let's should I it. what should I make? Um, summer show. Make a sunshine for a, summer show. A sunshine. Like it. Like <laughs> Marie did right here. Like a little. Can you do an arc and like a zigzag to make a it's sun? It's not going to be pretty. Okay. Write your name. Oh. <laughs> the go-to. Okay. So I'm gonna, I've got a little green dot there and as I start moving the machine, actually I'm not even writing my name, I am just kind of squiggling. Oh, there you go. La la la, that looks fabulous. More and sound effects today, we got those yesterday. <laughs> I need my sound effects. Okay, so I hit that record button to end it and now I've got this design, it's just beautiful. It I definitely beautiful. wanna take that and stitch it out now. Um, but yeah, so I can save this design and I could take it into our Pro Stitcher Designer software if I yeah. wanted to tweak it a little bit. Um, a lot of people like to sign their names on quilts. Okay. So they can do this recording. So I'm going to say, if you've used record on your Pro Stitcher, leave a comment and tell us how you've used it. Because there's a lot of different ways to probably use record that we haven't even thought about. Oh yeah, it's so limitless. It's an awesome yeah. feature. So I know, I know a lot of people. That's a lovely design. It's about almost a humpback camel. So there you go. I was thinking maybe an amoeba or something. Yeah. So we're almost out of time. So I want to re just remind you if you're interested in the, the apron prize today with pockets full of goodies. You better hurry and comment. Yes, we're make a quick time. comment. Um, we've already kind of chosen a random number and, and Kim's going to tell us who kind of landed on that random number. So while we're um, waiting for her to pick that though, let's just reiterate, okay. handyquilter.education. You can find those new, um, those new classes. courses there. Yes. And make sure that you post your pictures on social media and use that hashtag HQ Summer Show. And we're so excited to see what quilts you've been making. And we're, we're some of the judges, so, you know. Don't tell them that. Oh. We don't want to be in trouble. Because so there's some really make awesome sure quilts. that I pick yours as my favorite. <laughs> yes, I've already got Bribery some really helps, awesome no. ones. It's I'm really having a hard time deciding of the ones that have been sent. But yeah, I kind of work. confused everybody yesterday because I said go to Instagram. You can post them on Instagram or on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yep. So either place. All right. Yep. And so can you show us a couple more of the quilts that have been entered? 
okay, who's your quilt? Patty, I love this quilt. I love the colors and just everything about it. It's beautiful. Thank you for sending that one in. I got to get a little bit oh, that's closer. The, the one that we were saying looked like Spider-Man. I love that one. Da Mom. Oh, I'm not going to do that justice at all. Da Mom Mertz. Da Mom Mertz. I, there, there must be a fun way to say that. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> let's check out that piecing. That's what's important. Oh, Can you that's read a that beautiful one? one. It's the same person. Oh, two from the same. Yeah. Nice. So that's a good point. You're not limited to one quilt. You oh, yeah. put in as many. Yeah. Yeah. More, more entries. And it's just fun. I hope that you're taking some time to, to go into the search engine of those social medias and put in the hashtag HQ Summer Show. And you can look at the quilts that have been submitted so far. So yeah. since we haven't had shows to go to, it's, it's nice to be able to see and be inspired by other people's quilts. So. So Kim, do you have our winner for this fabulous apron full of fun goodies? Mari Piper. <gasps> Woohoo! She says, she I use mostly 10 to 13 stitches per inch and I have about 6 million stitches. Oh, I wonder what machine she had. I had to go check because I had no idea. Very good. I have no idea how many are on my machine. Hey Mari, right thanks either. for looking that up for us. Isn't that fun? Hey, so. so Mari, this is for you. You have got to go on and send a message or an email to HQ email events. HQ events at handyquilter.com. Yes. So this, it's your responsibility to email us with your contact information so that we can mail this to you. Yeah. Send us your address so, so we can ship this out yep. to you. We'll have it ready to go. So thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget, we're back on tomorrow at 12 with Kim and Christina, and they're going to tell you all about the, the Forte and the amazing features that, that it has as well. So, yep. and more quilts and more prizes. <laughs> Lots of okay. prizes. See you then.